Hi everyone, Janet Ranki. Welcome on YouTube. Thank you so much for following. I can't thank you enough for following this channel. I look forward to continuing to make videos for you. So long as you continue following, leaving your comments, I highly, highly appreciate. Today's topic is very interesting. I'm going to explain to you how people make money, actually create wealth, build homes, and do very well back home as foreign students, as international students. This is the secret, my friends, F1 student visa. It's worth it. It's worth the long road of lining up in the embassy. Okay, so I'll explain how that happens for you to understand how people are making money at home, actually making millions in your currency, something they never dreamt of. They are coming to America, they are going to Canada, and they are working and getting jobs. So I'm going to explain how, and for you to understand how they are making that money, you have to know the benefits of student visa. Thank you so much, by the way. Continue subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing on YouTube, okay? Subscribe, I love you so much. I thank you enough for coming and subscribing on this channel. So I hope some of you, you are home and you're listening and thinking, how am I going to make money, okay? Some of you, you're graduating colleges. Some of you, you just started school. You can't see a place where you'll find jobs. You're thinking, oh my God, I'm going to be jobless. Or you graduated and you have no hope. You don't know how you'll create wealth for your family. Or maybe you already have a job, but you're never getting ahead. The little money you get, you're busy paying fees for your family. You're busy putting food on the table and paying rent. So one of the ways people are creating wealth, honestly, is coming to the United States and going to Canada. F1 student visa. And I'll explain some of the benefits of F1 student visa. First of all, F1 student visa is a visa they give you stamp on your passport for you to enter the United States as a foreign student. To enter the United States as a foreign student, okay, international student. When you come here, that's how USCIS will monitor you and ISIS because you have to maintain at least 12 credit, uh, credit hours on campus so that they don't chase you, so that they don't deport you, okay? So it's not free of charge, it's not easy. But honestly, in the end, it is worth it, okay? So this is what happens. First of all, the benefits of this F1 student visa, number one, you can bring your spouse and children on F2. And you say how, okay? Once you get admission at the university, you can choose to bring them the first day, okay? When you come to school, you can show up with your family members. Alternatively, you can come before them, establish residence, know how you'll pay for things before you bring them. And how does this process work? Whoever is applying for school, whether it's the husband or wife, okay, the first thing they apply for admission. Once they're accepted, before they accept you, in fact, the school will expect a bank statement. The school will expect you to show that you'll be able to pay and not become a public charge. A public charge in the, in, in the United States means that someone came here in America, they did, not have en they did not have enough funding, they ended up on the streets, or they ended up asking the American government for help. Obviously, the students, I mean, the schools do not want that, okay? The government does not want that. They want you to come here prepared to take care of yourself, to take care of your expenses, living expenses, books, tuition, and everything. And if you continue following, of course, Janet will always make videos on how to pay for this uh, education in the United States, okay? So once you demonstrate to the school that you'll be able to pay, the school will be satisfied with your admission requirements. Once they are met, the school will give you something called I-20. I-20 is admission to the United States. That's the document you actually take to the embassy to tell them you've been admitted to a college or university in the United States. Having said that, even if you miss to take the admission letter to the embassy, they know the I-20 demonstrates that you have admission. But anyway, make sure you carry everything to the embassy. Always remember, I make videos on how to help you survive the embassy and all those things, okay? Now, once they give you admission and the I-20, that is the moment you'll make a decision. Do I want my spouse to come with me or do I want to come alone to the United States, okay? So at that moment, you can go to, to the school and say, hey, you gave me this admission, but actually I want to bring my, my husband or I want to bring my wife. 
and the school will let you know and say hey because you came uh, i mean you applied as an individual we only asked a bank statement of about fifteen thousand per year but now since you want to bring your spouse and kids you need to demonstrate that you can actually pay or take care of them therefore we'll need a bank statement that is about twenty five thousand or about twenty thousand dollars depending with the school obviously this is just an example once you produce that bank statement the school will, will, will make for you an i-20 for you an i-20 for the spouse and an i-20 for each of your children those are the documents you'll take to the embassy all of you of course you'll show up at the embassy except if the kids are below 13 you have to communicate to the embassy i don't know how that works but mostly you will have to show up face to face i'll make videos on that that is not what we are doing today today we are talking about how people make wealth how people get rich in fact make money and change their lives through student visa having said that if you all come to america both of you the spouse maybe will not be able to work okay but honestly honestly i've had not me some people work under the table it's not allowed be very careful that is not the law okay that is not the law don't bring a spouse thinking that when your spouse comes here they'll be working as you go to school okay does it happen i hear i'm told i don't know i've never seen it personally but yes it happens that's how people create wealth maybe two people working okay but of course us on this page we do what is right okay so now we come as a student here the first thing people do when they come of course they settle when they start classes after a few weeks they go to the international student office and request them to give a letter of employment when they get that letter of employment from the student office they take that to something called or a place called social security office when you go to the social security office they will give you a social security number a social security number is given to anyone working in the united states that's how the government is able to track taxes when you work you have to pay taxes okay so once you get that student i mean the social security number now as a student you can work on campus the very minimum these people make probably let's assume is ten dollars an hour all right if you make ten dollars an hour times 20 hours per week that is the legal amount of uh, time allowed for international students to work in a month you end up making 800 dollars do that in your own currency if it's two people that is 1600 dollars now during summertime you'll have more time to work as much as you can because you're allowed to be off school so most students that's the time they make up money to pay for the next semester and also to do projects back home that is how they are making their money on campus during the, the semester you have to have credit hours 12 credit hours so it's very very hard to make more money but during summer these students make a lot of money and send home that's how they are building homes that's how they are improving the lives of the people in their communities so if you didn't know that just not coming to america i'm a very high advocate of coming here nothing against home but for those who do not have opportunities are the ones that actually i target okay because personally that is what happened to me i only share what happened to me based on experience now when they come here if they have a master's program they have something called cpt cpt the students are allowed to work off campus full time again that is how they are making that money to to, to go to school okay and also send some money back home cpt you can always ask when in doubt always go to the international office and ask what programs they have some students ask for scholarships once they're admitted they come here they learn they write uh, statements they write essays and they are lucky to get scholarships guess what sometimes those scholarships have room and board they have tuition and sometimes after you pay that you have some balance okay and that is how people make that extra money to send back home now another way they make money after graduation the students do something called opt any student on f1 uh, visa once they come to the united states and they graduate they're allowed to do something called opt optional practical training that one you can work anywhere in the united states as much as you want to work okay they are not monitoring you but it has to be in the field you went to school for for instance if you went to school for business administration you have to find internship you have to find opt in business administration 
And that is the time people make money as they bring some, it, some of it at home and create projects. Okay, so you're understanding how people are making money. That's not all. That is not all. Some people, of course, I told you in the beginning, they go under the table and they find jobs. Okay, but that's not what I'm saying. Me, I don't know anyone that is doing that. But probably that is how it's happening because some employers are very desperate. And by the way, they are not supposed to employ people without papers. That is wrong and it's against the law. Okay, now, this is the big one. This is the big one. Most of these students, when they come to America, they come with whatever they have in their pocket. Probably they have business administration. Some of them have public health. Some of them have agriculture. Some of them have history, okay, linguistics, communication, you name it, sociology, psychology, all these majors, education. When they reach here, they realize, you, go, you know what? For me to get a green card, I better do nothing. Guess what? The second semester they enrolled in community colleges or they go to that university and ask how they can get to nursing school. That is how they are doing it. Many people now are nurses from home because they came here. They realize if they continue with the career they have, first of all, they might not make as much money as they want. But secondly, they might not be able to get green cards. So many of them end up doing that, okay? Changing to nursing. Guess what? When you change to nursing, all right, at the end of graduation, you get a very good job. They file for you a green card and you stay in America permanently. You bring your spouse, you bring your children in case you had left them home. They all join you on a green card. Guess what? They are making in your currency millions. They are creating wealth for themselves, for their communities, for their countries, okay? That is how it's happening. Some people come here, and I know many of them, they even go for the bigger courses, okay? But on a student visa, it can be, it can be very, very uh, gruesome. It can be very hard for you to, to stay on a student visa and target medicine. Unless you find a way, okay, which people do, this is another way they make money, okay? Now... Nothing is guaranteed, but some of them come here young, single, divorced, or single mothers, single fathers. They find love. Guess what? They end up in a, uh, marrying an American citizen. Maybe within one year, they already have what? Working papers. That one happens. So they don't have to work on campus. They don't have to go to school again until they settle down. That is how they are making their money, okay? And that is how they are sending money back home and building homes that some of you don't have. So I would encourage you, okay, to look into this. This is what is happening. Now, some people come here as students and they fear for political persecution. They come from countries that are, are ravaged with war, with uh, political, you know, uh, uh, political issues. Some of them probably, they, 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 they are scared of your lives. The law says if you, if you fear for political persecution, religious persecution, or any other form of persecution, and you fear for your life, some people actually come here and ask for asylum, okay? Now, asylum, you know, keep in mind, if you come, you cannot ask after staying here for two years. It has to be within the first year. The first year you ask for asylum, you have to file USCIS.gov for all that information. Today, that is not what I'm saying. I'm just telling you how students come to America, how they create wealth for themselves and their families, okay? So, I mean, asylum is another way they do it. They marry, okay? They, 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 they go to school for nursing. They go to school for masters, and then they ask employers to file for them uh, H-1B visas. Again, H-1B, there's a cap. You have to be very educated, okay? But they, there are other H-1B visas that are not capped. Keep in mind, if they, they, they say 65,000 H-1B visas, they fill up so quick, okay? They are very competitive. But remember... There are other people that give H-1Bs, like universities and non-profit organizations. Those do not have a cap, okay? So some people go to, to school and upgrade and have a master's and have a PhD and they find employers. These employers file for them H-1B and eventually H-1B leads to a green card. Again, continue watching videos. I will talk in details about H-1B visas. I'll talk in details about green cards. I'll talk in details about asylum. But today, keep in mind, just because someone came as a student does not mean they can not use other ways of changing to work permits and making money and creating riches and doing very well at home. Okay? Personally, you can, you can see me here. 
look at me this is my house i love being here i can't thank you enough for following me for many years i'm working so hard now on youtube i've been giving a lot of strength on facebook but now i'm on youtube thank you for always being patient for me i mean with me you've been telling me janet when you look come to youtube now i'm here okay personally i will always repeat and by the way if you followed me for a long time do not say janet is repeating information okay remember some people are seeing janet for the first time and you when you succeed i hope that you continue watching me but most of you probably will find another way and move on with life janet will continue being here just like when you went to kindergarten your teacher did not stop teaching just because you graduated kindergarten you went to first grade you went to eighth grade you went to high school and university if you go back you'll find your teacher still teaching janet will continue doing videos and yes she'll keep on repeating and refining the same information because she has respect for that new follower i came here you know so that was to repeat my story okay i came here as an f1 student international student i went to the embassy i asked for english as a second language it was an english program for about six months i flew into vermont st michael's college when i reached there they gave me a placement test and they determined that my english was actually not that bad i scored almost everything and so sometimes if they are teaching stuff that i knew they would give me time to stay away from class and i used that time to study for my nursing exams because i had a bachelor's degree in nursing so i went ahead and i was reading for the nclex when i passed the nclex remember i'm still on f1 student visa okay when i passed i found an employer that employer had lawyers they changed for me from f1 student visa to green card green card aka just means permanent residency in america the green card can take time but always remember they give you a work permit it's called an ead okay as a student i got the ead i got the work permit as i wait for change of status to go through meanwhile the work permit i went back to the social security office they removed the restrictions on my my social security number okay once my my social security number said i'm free to work anywhere in the united states i went to the motor vehicle department i took my passport i took my social security number I took my uh, work permit and asked for a driving license. Voila, I was free to work in the United States. I worked for my employer, okay, for about four years. The contract was three years, but I had other things to do. So after four years, I moved, okay. I was in New Jersey, but I used to live in Delaware. But I moved to California because I had other things to do, go to school, support family, and do that. Meanwhile, working as a nurse, I made a lot of money, I'll be honest okay because i used to work weekend programs this is for another day but since the video will be here how people use f1 to make money it happened to me okay because they signed for me a contract of only 23 dollars an hour you understand but when i started working they were so desperate for nurses i never got the 23 dollars an hour very rarely because they will tell me janet if you work this day will change to 50 dollars an hour and then most of the time they'll ask me janet come for extra time so i used to make a time and a half on weekends they asked me to join the weekend program i would get 45 dollars an hour so i used to make a lot of money so if you see me down the road many years this money has accumulated i've done projects of course those things count and that's why i'm saying this is how people create wealth for their countries for their own families and for themselves they build homes so if you're one of those people who are listening, thank you so much. I hope you have an idea. I'll continue. If you have other ideas how uh, F1 student visas can help people to create wealth, go down here in the comments, subscribe. By the way, if you need any help on how to apply, okay? Some of you hear these things and you don't know how to apply for F1 student visa. I'll be more than happy to sign up for my newsletter. I'll be sending articles in your email, okay? I'll post my email down here in the links go check my email go on my website janetrangi.com okay follow the articles there watch the videos there of course this is janet rangi i hope you have subscribed okay now we learned i will summarize i hope i remember all the things i said but basically when you come as f1 student some people work under the table and with their spouses to get money us on this page we never do that of course 
okay we will focus on the legal way which is working on campus 20 hours per week when summer comes we work even harder we work you know prepare for the next semester save and send some money home to our families we do cpt we do opt we change to green cars we change to h1b we change to more, more lucrative, uh, lucrative careers like nursing pharmacy and other medical courses social work uh, some people public health i don't know but just know people change to other courses some people change to asylum so they can have papers if they fear for political persecution some people come on student visas they marry american okay and get those work permits so that is how people are making money okay they are making wealth in millions if you do the math people can make up to a hundred thousand dollars per year do it those are millions okay so that's why janet is saying that's how you'll create wealth for yourself for your community and for your country i can't thank you so much thank you so much for coming on this youtube channel muchas gracias merci beaucoup kwaheri shukran asante thank you so much for coming and i will see you in the next video subscribe okay bye bye see you bye